And of course, well, Zsa Zsa, now you put me in quite the pickle. You see, with those earphones on, you can't hear me, but the odds are highly against you cracking open that yapper and annoying me to death. So what to do, what to do, what to do? Ah, hell. Stop addressing me as Dr. Cox in front of your patients. When they find out my actual name, they tend to page me with questions when they realize just exactly how inept you really are. Oh, and as an added safety measure, from now on, I'll only be responding to Doc, Dr. Caesar, or The Big Cheese. And no, I'm not joking. Not now. Not ever. <gasps> Dr. Cox. Dr. Cox. Big cheese. Yes. If you're wondering why Dr. Kelso's nose is squeaking, about a week ago he was torturing Elliot. And Dr. Cox, well, <coughs> needless to say, there were consequences. Perry, great news. I managed to swing it so that you get to go over to the state pen today and do the annual inmates' physicals. Hells, bells, Bobbo, if you want to fire me, just do it. I would. But even though this room was quite crowded when you sucker punched me, apparently nobody saw it happen. <laughs> uh, so what happened, sir? So, Dr. Cox, can you uh, look at her chart? Ruby, did you not see what just happened? Kelso was so far up my ass that I can taste brill cream in the back of my throat, and you, you're... You're a third year now. Wake up. This whole Dr. Cox riding into the rescue part of the show is over. Well, you're on your own. Oh, hey, Bobcat. Listen, I was hoping that maybe you could get someone to cover for me out of the prison tonight. And I know that the very idea of you doing a favor for me makes those ass cheeks clinch up so tight that you could shove a lump of coal up there and probably crap out a diamond, right? Oh, well, come on, Bob. You can't even remember the last time I saw my son. And you, you, you're a father, for God's sake. You understand, don't you? My son was recently kicked out of his Hare Krishna sect for being too much of a hippie and is currently residing in the Portland subway system. The point, Barry, is that the only thing I care less about than my son is your son. Have fun at the big house. Don't you love the outfit? You know, I always wanted to be the father of a tiny gay sailor. Jordan, come on. We agreed that we would wait until he's quite a bit older before we started systematically ruining his life, right? Right. I may have painted his toenails for funsies. Oh. Dr. Cox, uh, I managed to get some tests on Mrs. Farah. Look, Gwyneth, you're old enough now to hear this from me. Every time I go out of my way to help you children, I get nothing but trouble. Now, this is the first five-minute window I've had in the last week to be with my son. And I'm just not going to have you pirouetting around in here while my heart is breaking inside. Sorry. Your heart is breaking inside? That is so embarrassing for you. Thank you for that. Oh, so you're going to sock me again? Good God, Perry. At a certain point, you're just beating up an old man. Lex, I'm just fixing your nose. <laughs> now, I'm real sorry I cold-cocked you there, Bob. I shouldn't have done that. Even if it did actually feel so damn good, I changed my pants afterwards. But still, I'm starting to think it would be smart if you and I were to bury the hatchet. What do you say there, Bob? Come on, handsome. <laughs> Listen up, Ace. You will always be a royal pain in my ass, and I will always be waiting for the day when I get to jam that knife into your sight once and for all, and you know it as well as I do. <laughs> Much better, thanks. You're welcome. People don't change, Perry. I can't believe you and Carla set a date. Yep, it's happening. Wedding talk. Oh, how lovely. Listen, Hilton sisters. Mr. Quinn in 206 still has a severely shattered clavicle and he needs a surgical consult now. And seeing as he's your patient and you're a surgeon, gosh, I was hoping that if you two hens have an extra moment between choosing centerpieces and deciding just exactly how you're going to attach that veil onto Baldy's head, well, it would just be super de duper if you could peek in in there and give him the old looky-loo, wouldn't it? Oh. 
Anyway, about this whole setting the date thing. Dr. Cox, does this shade of red make me look like a clown? No, Barbie, no. It makes you look like a prostitute who caters exclusively to clowns. Oh, I'm sorry, that was my mistake. I keep forgetting that you're a horrible, horrible person. Ooh, backbone, Barbie. Yeah, excuse me. You wouldn't happen to be signing out Mr. Hudson to the on-call resident, would you? Yeah, why? He's your patient, he needs a lumbar puncture, and you can't necessarily count on the on-call resident to do that now, can you? It's just that, Dr. Cox, I've got a date with this guy named Sean. Would you do me a personal favor and excuse me just for one moment? Yeah. I cannot miss his dinner. Oh, Barbie, I, I actually see your point. You should, in fact, go on your little date because I have some busy work that's going to take me over into the vicinity of Mr. Hudson's room, so I'll just pop my head in there and tell him that he's going to die. But if you have a moment between dinner and giving it away for free, if you could pick up the phone and call Mr. Hudson's wife and kids and tell them about, you know, the dying... Oh, I know, sugar. This would be just the most terrific place to work on the planet if it weren't for all these sick people. What? So, thanks to you, Sean blew me off, but I'm okay. Old Elliot would have gone into a tailspin, but new Elliot's just gonna get him back because new Elliot is a fixer. Like that guy over there, if his stitches lifted and his spleen ruptured, I would just go over and fix him. My spleen is going to rupture? Relax, you're fine. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just going to show Sean that he will always come first. Gosh, I hate to interrupt this one gal pep rally there, Barbie, but I give this guy two weeks. Three if you are just terrific in the sack. Well, then it's three. Hmm. I mean, you're wrong. And I just, uh, just got off the phone with Jordan, who told me that my son rolled over for the first time. <laughs> Big who cares? Not about Jack rolling over for the first time, but definitely about your reaction to my son rolling over for the first time. Point being that I missed it because I was here. You might want to get a pen out and write this down because here comes the inside scoop. The hospital comes first. Always. Always? Forever and ever. Endeavor, 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 endeavor. You getting this? Endeavor, 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 endeavor. Thanks again for holding the door for me back there. In my defense, I didn't know you were behind me because I didn't hear anybody telling me what a horrible person I am. Oh, I'm. Hey, how are the new happy parents? Oh, I'm living my dream. Have a great day today. Hurry home tonight so you can ignore your son and not do your share. <laughs> you make me want to kill myself and everybody around me. <laughs> Come, Dixie. So, uh, you and Jordan, huh? You want to talk about it? I do, but not here because I'll probably just... I'm crying. It's too late. Here's why I wouldn't do this. Come on, Perry. Get it together. Get it together. Get it together. You stop it. You stop it. You stop it. You stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Come on, you idiot. No. What up? Message from Jordan. How's it going? Just great. Hey, watch it. Dr. Cox, we've known each other for over two years. Let me in, okay? Help me help you. Help me help you. Help me help you. Help me help you. Fine, nobody. Let me let me tell you a little story. It starts every day at five in the morning, which is just about the time that you're setting your hair for work when I am awakened by a sound. Is that a cat being gutted by a fishing knife? No. That's my son. He's hungry and he's got a load in his pants so big that I'm actually considering hiring a stable boy. But I go ahead and dig in because I do love the lad and, oh gosh, you know me. I'm a giver and I'm off to the hospital where my cup runneth over with both quality colleagues, such as yourself, and a proverbial clown car full of sick people. But what the hey, my pay is about the same as guys who break rocks with other rocks, and I only have to work three or four hundred hours a week, so so far I'm a pretty happy camper. And then I head back home where I'm greeted by the faint musk of baby vomit in a house that used to smell like, well, Nothing, nothing, nothing. It, 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 in fact, it used to smell like nothing at all. And all I want to do before I restart this whole glorious cycle is, you know, maybe lay on the couch and have a beer, watch some sports center. And if I'm not too sweaty from the day's labor, stick my hand right down my pants. But apparently that's not in Jordan's definition of pulling your weight. So uh, 
There you are, superstar. <laughs> Fix that. What's well, easy? Just tell her about it. Tell her everything you feel. Should I give her every reason to accept that I'm for real? First of all, no one understands relationships like Billy Joel, okay? Uptown girl got me through high school. Long story for another day. Secondly, you don't end up like the Randolphs back there, just not saying a word to each other, do you? You wish we were more like the Randolphs, don't you? God save me, I do. I really do. Oh. Hi, you asleep? I'm tired. Oh, my little newbie doobie do. Say that whole telling Jordan how I feel thing just went terrific. Thank you for that. Now I need a place to crash. Where's Naomi's bedroom? Good night, roomies. Hello, David. I've been expecting you. Ah! Yeah, I just thought I'd come by and play with some of your stuffed animals. And I know, I know, they're for the kids. <laughs> Also wanted to let you know that I will be bringing my son by this morning. Yeah, I don't think so there, Chief. Where's Mr. Cookie Pants? Okay, pasta. I said, where's Mr. Cookie Pants? He's in a safe place, Dave. If you touch one hair on his head, I swear to God, I'll inject your kid with chicken box. No, you won't. I know. For God's sakes, it's an innocent doll. No, David. It's a collectible. Whatever. Hospitals are hectic, but there's a certain time every morning after the bedpans have been emptied that a calm washes over the place. And you can't help but feel peaceful. Holy Vishnu. Look, we've been working together a while. Could you not whistle at me? You're right, Nubi. We have been working together for a while. Of course, I wouldn't know the exact number of days unless I consulted my friends for life calendar that I keep taped inside my hope chest. Still, I've learned to make Dr. Cox's rants work for me. I catch up on paperwork. I look after patients. Carla, can you check room air pulse ox on Mrs. Ship? You got it, Bambi. I take care of those official things that just have to get done. You're a jerk. You're a jerk. Long story short there, Molly, I will always whistle at you like you're a blonde with big bombs, and I'm a construction worker just released from prison. Is that clear? Crystal. Super. Uh, listen, while I have you here, I'm applying for a fellowship, and I could really use a letter of recommendation. I was thinking that when you wrote it, instead of using a girl's name, you could refer to me as Dr. Dorian. I think it sounds a little more professional, and frankly, each time you call me a girl's name, I die a little inside. Look, Janice, Denise, Tiffany, Amber, Thieson. Let me go ahead and share a little something special with you that I like to call Perry's Perspective. One. If someone's standing in front of me in line at the coffee shop and they can't decide what they want in the half hour it took to get to the register, I should be allowed to kill them, too. I'm fairly sure if they took porn off the Internet, there'd only be one website left, and it'd be called Bring Back the Porn 3. And most importantly of all, the only way to be respected as a doctor, nay, respected as a man, is to be an island. You are born alone, you damn sure die alone. Isn't that right, Spike? The point is, and you just might want to jot this down, only the weak need help. I should get that tattooed on my neck. Just a real nice helmet there, Princess. Actually, it's not a helmet. It's a hairnet. It has extra room so you don't mess up your hairdo. Fair enough. I'm going to go ahead and write you a prescription for two testicles, and you feel free to get this filled out whenever you want. But right now, I'm going after that residency director gig, and you're joining me for a really stupid board member meet and greet. Will you write my recommendation? Oh, hell no. Goodbye. Oh, give me a break. I'll write whatever you want. Just, we got to go. OK, fine. Let me just fix my hair. Oh, wait. I don't have to. Oh, good god. <laughs> Gotta go. Well, well, well. Snip my pickle and call me Shlomo. <laughs> You're not actually applying for residency director. Oh, I don't know, Bob. Here I like to think I've accomplished plenty of things much more difficult than this. Why, just yesterday morning, I somehow managed to hack into your voicemail and change the outgoing message to hi. This is Big Bob. Why, I'm not in right now, but at the beep, leave your name and your penis size. Perry, have you ever wondered why you've never risen above clinical staff at this hospital? I mean, come on, pal. Who do you think the board listens to concerning promotions around here? Why don't I tell you after the beep? Beep. Bob Kelso. Ten inches. It's like a baguette. 